All right, so now what we're going to do is use some of the knowledge we should have derived from this chapter to talk about a real-world situation. So when companies want to improve sales, they usually provide some type of sales commission to their employees in order to entice the employees to sell products. So generally, companies will compensate employees by paying a commission, maybe a base salary plus a commission, and commission based on sales dollars can actually lead to lower profits of a company, believe it or not. And a lot of companies don't realize this because they think that, well, obviously commissions are going to motivate employees to sell a lot, but that's not enough. If you sell more than one type of product, it's not enough that employees are incentivized to sell products, plural. They need to sell the most profitable products. So let's look at a little example to demonstrate this. Pipeline Unlimited produces two types of surfboards, the XR7 and the Turbo. The XR7 sells for 100 and generates a contribution margin of 25. The Turbo sells for 150 and earns a contribution margin of 18. The sales force is compensated based on sales commissions. Um, and those sales commissions are based on sales dollars. So what happens? Well, if I'm a salesperson, I'm going to be pushing the turbo because it sells at a higher selling price. And that in turn is going to give me a higher commission, which increases my paycheck and makes me a happy camper. However, the company wants them really to focus on the XR7 because it has a higher CM. Remember, whatever happens to CM happens to profit. So by focusing on the turbo at 18 bucks, that's not impacting profit as good as the XR7 would with a contribution margin of $25. So the moral of the story is that companies really should consider motivating their sales force to sell the product with the highest CM per unit. So instead of basing sales commissions on sales, we should be basing them on contribution margin because what that does is it aligns the goals of the employee with those of the company. Everybody wins in that scenario. And understanding the concept of CM can help you understand why that would be the case. Because again, I'm a broken record. I think I said this 582,000 times. Whatever happens to CM happens to profit. So CM is our focus. Now this concept of a multi-product company brings us to our last topic, which is break-even points for a multi-product company. So when we have a multi-product company, we have to have an assumption, and that is that the sales mix is going to stay the same. The sales mix is the relative proportion of one product versus another product. And I think I mentioned this with Apple. It's the proportion of iPhones versus iPads that are sold. When a company sells more of one product, break-even becomes more complex. So let's assume RBC sells bikes and carts. Well, because they sell 45% of their revenue is bikes and 55% is carts, it's going to affect their overall contribution margin percentages because bikes and carts, as you can see here, have different ratios. So bikes have a 40% CM ratio, carts have a 55%. We can't simply take 55 plus 40 and divide it by 2 to get the new CM or the average CM because it wouldn't account for the sales mix. We actually sell more carts than bikes, so the weighted average contribution margin ratio is going to be more heavily weighted towards the carts contribution margin than the bikes. To figure it out, all we need to do is get the total sales and total CM for the company, and then that's where this 48.2 comes from. It's the 265 total CM for both products divided by the 550 total sales for both products. So that's the hardest part is getting to that number. Once we have that number, then it's easy. We just shove it into the formula for break even and we're able to get break even for a multi-product company. 
if we're not able to get the totals, we can't just take the 40 and the 55 and divide it by two. We have to weight them. So we would take four bikes. Another way we could get the answer if we can't get the totals is we take the 40% CM times the sales mix, which is, let me do it this way. So CM percentage times the sales mix for bike and cart. So for cart, it's 55% is the CM ratio. And it says bikes comprise 45% of the sales mix and carts the remaining 55. So to get a weighted average, we would have to take 40% times 45%. which gives me 18%, and then 55% times 55%, which gets me 30.25. 30, 30 and then we add that together, and we get 0.482, or 48.2%. So, the easiest way to do it is if we have the total sales and total CM for each product, we add that up. That's what this 550 and 265 is. And then we do our division, CM divided by sales for the company overall to get our weighted average CM. When that isn't possible, we need to take the CM percentage for each product times its relative sales mix and then get what is referred to as the weighted average contribution margin. Either way, you get to the same answer, but it really depends on the variables that are provided in the problem to determine which way is feasible. Once I have that, then as I mentioned, all we do is revert back to the formulas we've already learned. If we want to know what the dollar sales is to break even, we take our fixed cost for the company overall, which is 170, and then divide it by that CM ratio. And that tells us that the company would break even when they sell $352,697 worth of product. And the allocation, again, would be 45% of that's on bikes, 55% of that is on carts. When we do out the math, we end up with 176 in profit instead of zero for break even. And that's just because of rounding. And you can see the calculation down here, the 45 and 55% sales mix. So multi-product companies make things a little more challenging because you don't just have one CM to use. You've got a CM for each product and you can't just add them together and divide by two to take a simple average. You have to factor in the sales mix. So you can either do that by getting the total values like we did back on this slide here, where we have the total sales for the company and the total CM for the company, and then we use those numbers to get our weighted average CM, or we have to do what I showed you down at the bottom right here, which is take our CM for each product times the related sales mix to get a weighted average that we can then use in our break-even formula. And then once we do that, it's the same old song and dance. Use our break-even formula, we can get our answer. If we want to get the dollar sales to break even, we divide by the CM ratio. If we want to get the units, we'd have to divide by the CM per unit. But in order to do that, we would have to have more information because we'd need to know what our selling price and variable cost is for each of these products on a per unit basis. And then we'd get a weighted average CM per unit going through the same process we did to get a weighted average CM percentage. And that's it for the main chunk of chapter five. But with this beauty, there's also an appendix. So don't forget to check out that video.